Joining us now, Republican Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. He's a member of the Foreign Relations Committee as well as Homeland Security and Government Affairs. Are you still a no on Gina Haspel's nomination, Senator? Yeah, I'm concerned on several fronts. The torture is one, but I'm also concerned about our close association with John Brennan. We've discovered that John Brennan, since he left government, is basically a very much a partisan and a hater of President Trump. Uh, Gina Haspel is known for years to be an acolyte of his. And also there are some questions now whether or not the CIA was receiving evidence or wiretapping information from the British intelligence on Trump officials in England. And I think if uh, we need to know, there are rumors also that she was over overseeing Europe at the time as the head of the CIA for Europe. So I think there are some questions we need to still ask. And I think it's actually uh, a mistake probably to approve her now if she was associated with John Brennan and anything that had to do with spying on the Trump campaign. We'll get to your spying questions about her in just a moment. But I know that, that one of your questions about her has been her participation in waterboarding. She yeah. said this week publicly that, um, that in hindsight she thinks it never should have been undertaken. Is that not enough for you? I think that contrasts with her words and actions at that time. She was reported by many people to be an enthusiastic supporter of this. And I think that shows a serious lack of judgment and a lack of sort of uh, having a moral compass as to know what's right and wrong. Probably even more serious than the waterboarding that we did to prisoners. Realize these are accused people, people who haven't been convicted of anything and were not positive. And in fact, of the 125 people that were tortured, about 26 of them were the wrong people. But worse than what we were doing is, we were sending them to barbarians like Assad in Syria. You know, we've been bombing Assad because we say he gassed his own people. We also would torture, if you send people to him, he would torture them for you. And our CIA sent people to Assad in Syria to be tortured. What did Gina Haspel know about that? Did she participate in that program? We also sent people to Egypt who disappeared forever. We presume were killed in captivity during their torture. And uh, was Gina Haspel part and parcel to sending those people to Egypt? So there are a lot of questions I still have. And I just think we're better than that as a, as a people. Uh, there's a lot of good people at the CIA. Do we have to have someone who really was an enthusiastic supporter of torture? To my knowledge, you're the only Republican who intends to vote no on her nomination. No, I think uh, John McCain is opposed as well as Jeff Flake. And there may be possibly another. But there are three Republicans so far who I think are willing to stand up and say torture is wrong. All right. Thank you for the correction. Um, but but I, my question is a, a, on another point. There are a number of Democrats who have said they will vote for her. Most Democrats um, voting against her, it would seem um, primarily want to do so because it blocks President Trump. Is that uh, an appropriate use of a negative I don't think, vote? Yeah, I don't think that's a fair analysis. I think they sincerely believe that torture is wrong and that waterboarding was wrong. And really that when we snatched people up, we snatched up a Canadian uh, engineer by the name of Maher Arer. He was sent to Syria and tortured by Assad. Uh, they finally released him after torture and said he didn't have, they had the wrong guy. He wasn't, he wasn't associated with terrorism at all. This happened 26 times out of 125. So I think it's important that in our country we presume inno innocence. Even the worst among us, someone accused of murder, we give them a lawyer, a trial, and a jury. And so, I don't know, I think it's important even for the most heinous crimes that we don't presume someone's guilty and just immediately lynch them or kill them. Uh, this is a very important part of who we are as a people. And I think we were frightened and we let our guard down after 9-11 and let go some of the basic principles of, uh, of, American, uh, or of American Republic. Back to your questions about CIA surveillance. Kellyanne Conway, the presidential advisor, said this morning on Fox uh, that it appears that the, the Obama administration or perhaps the FBI was surveilling the Trump campaign. And, and you have questions about that. Yeah, and we've gotten some re initial response from Gina Haspel, who says they did not uh, do this, they did not oversee it, and she said that they didn't willingly cooperate with British intelligence. We've sent her a follow-up question, and our follow-up question is this, does receiving intelligence does that mean you were cooperating? Did you not receive any intelligence? Because there's a story out there from The New Yorker that said the head of British intelligence flew to Washington, met with John Brennan, and presented him with what in our country would be illegally obtained information. 
That sounds like cooperation between the CIA and the British intelligence. We'd like to know the truth of that matter because if John Brennan did that, I think he acted illegally and he should be punished. We have a lot to get to today. I know that uh, the Senate is undertaking some preliminary votes on your proposal to uh, balance the budget in five years. Does it have a chance of passing, Senator? Well, Republicans say they are for balancing the budget, so today is a litmus test, and uh, if your senator's been saying they're for a balanced budget, they ought to vote for it. It's the penny plan budget. We cut one penny out of every dollar. It's a very modest amount, but it's something that Republicans say they're for, and I think it'll be interesting when people analyze the vote that many Republicans are going home to their state and saying they're for balanced budgets, but then when an actual budget that balance is presented to them, uh, they run for the halls. The, the criticism is that in future years, it's much more than a penny per dollar. Well, it's actually, third, you know, we spent $3.2 trillion. One percent of that is $32 billion. It's $32 billion, or a little bit less, actually, each year. Now, initially, there's a little bit more of a cut because we reinstitute the budget caps that we had uh, since 2011, which were controlling spending. So the first year is a little more than $30 billion, but every subsequent year is $32 billion or less. Senator Rand Paul will be watching. Thank Thanks. you very much for your time today. Thank you.